This show is part of the Trans Podcaster Visibility Initiative. Lums are on board. What plaything do you have to offer me today? An odd topic from the SK system, ma'am. Hmm. Tell me about this SK system. Yes, they have this weird obsession with changing their appearance and through fantasy and what they deem holographic technology, ma'am. Hmm. So, what's the, that all about? <laughs> well, uh, let me tell you, ma'am. Uh, it seems the more I look into it, the more unethical and, and may I say, fucked up it becomes. Ah. So, in layman's hey. terms. <laughs> Uh, in layman's terms, <laughs> um, and to break character, basically, in as you might know, in sci-fi and fantasy aspects, there's either the whole aspect of holographic technology, uh, mm -hmm. think holodeck from Star Trek and so forth and so on. Oh, 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 are you talking about that guy that was married to the hologram and it got shut down? Shock and terror! With Sasha, the Princess of Darkness, and Chris, the Martinsburg Madman, in Sasha After Dark, the Podcast of Darkness Reboot. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, you're listening to uh, Sasha After Dark, Podcast of Darkness. I am Sasha Constantine Monroe, aka Sasha, the Princess of Darkness. And my accomplice here is, of course, uh, Mr. Christopher Lumser um, of, of course, Long Coat Mafia Podcast. But here he's just our Martin AK Man Man. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Martinsburg Man Man himself, whose current 2023 girl goal is to see how many businesses in the downtown area he can get banned from. And get hey. himself a real doll. <laughs> Send $20,000 to... <laughs> no, they're just going to send you the box, and hopefully it's sealed in, like, a coffin, the whole nine yards, yeah. just so you have that added creep factor. <laughs> yeah, send it in a box. Send it to, uh, uh, contact Sasha in the, you know, DMs, and we'll, we'll work out. things out. <laughs> and, uh, they'll send it to me, and, uh, I will do an unboxing. I will do an <laughs> unboxing and post it up to YouTube. We'd have to put it in a <laughs> coffin. You know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You just get oh, delivered yeah. a coffin one day. That would be hilarious. <laughs> oh, that would be an excuse for you and your partner to come on down and just, you know, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be like oh, up. what do you... Why I'm glad to see you too. And why do you why is your camera out recording right now? And we're expecting oh, a delivery. <laughs> <laughs> we're expecting a delivery today. Chris, when are you off? Uh I'm scheduled to be off for these days. Oh, we'll be down. Do you have a crowbar? Well, why? <laughs> Find a crowbar. Get a crowbar. And we'll have to have getting a delivered. crowbar. Like, right kind of, like, on the lane itself so we can carry it down suspiciously in the middle of the night. So your neighbor's like, why does Lumser have a coffin? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a real Fright Night setup. <laughs> uh, I have my neighbors with their garden. Like, <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we take... No, I won't I do that. I him at here. night. What's going on here? <laughs> I always see him at night. Really in the day now. What the hell? He's sitting out with this weird person that doesn't seem to move all the time. He's blacked all out that. all of his windows. Yeah. My windows are already, already blacked out. <laughs> he that doesn't come out weird. as it is. He's not coming out even less now. <laughs> Indeed. But, <laughs> but uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown on like, some of the activities this weekend. Because... Uh, uh, Friday, I had to take care of some appointments and stuff. So, Good Friday wasn't exactly a day off of work for me because I had to go get a 
an ultrasound done on my thyroid and blood work and all that fun stuff. Um, but Saturday, Al came and got me. Um, we went to see a movie. We'll talk about that shortly. We did the Hagerstown thing because everybody talks bad about Hagerstown, but there are some good spots there. And I'm quite sure you being in Martinsburg, you know. Everybody talks crap about Martinsburg, but there's some good food spots and there's some, some things that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah. You know, with us, we have like with Hagerstown, you have um, Hartle Subs, Crumpy's Donuts, um, the downtown park, which can be nice. Just don't be there too far after dark because all of the interesting people come out. Um, but we had did that after seeing the movie, you know, donuts, hartles, the park, hung out at the mall, um, did some filming for the upcoming uh, Blobfest pageant entry. So excited for that. Stay tuned. Um, but on top of that, uh, we went to a punk show, um, had uh, the do what's cosmic halitosis and like three or four other little punk bands. It was like $5 a head. Wasn't that bad. Yeah. Um, but hey, support local music. Uh, it was odd because it was out there like 192 West Lee Street in this place called The Harvest, which was kind of creepy because you're like, I'm walking into what essentially looks like the back of an abandoned building. Am I walking into a Saul situation? And I get in there and there's a bunch of old punkers. And of course they look scary, but once you get to know like the real punk community, they're actually warm, loving people. Like, it was the cleanest punk restroom I've ever been to. Like and That's that's the weird thing. It's like a lot of pe folks don't understand is that, but I have that fun tale I always tell. It's like, I went to a punk show. This was uh, maybe within, uh, was it either, it was either early 2008 or late 2008. Eight, because I said it because it was cold out. It might have been late two thousand eight. They still because... doing punk shows at the Rand House down there in Martinsburg. Ah, uh, no. Like at the old train house. No. 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 That's lame. Uh, but um, I went to my buddy was like, um, "There's going to be a show now. The bar doesn't exist. Some something else exists. What used to be now. cookies." No, it was um, it was called Dung Beetles in Winchester. Okay, uh, it was near the downtown um, open air mall in Winchester, and it's like there's going to be a punk show. You need to go. Uh, this was at the time uh, the whole me's kind of being going through everything. What happened months earlier with my ex and all that whole shit. My 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 buddy's like, you got to get out. You got to you know you got to get your mind off your shit. You gotta have fun. You're probably feeling still a little bit of anger. It's a punk show. Get your ass in that, you know, if there's a mosh pit, get your ass in that mosh pit. Work out some of that rage. Work, that work out some of that rage, you know, and we went and we were there early. I was at the bar. Uh, there was two bars in that particular pub. One in the front, one in the back. I'm in the back one and having a beer. And the bartender's like, ah, I'm not really into the X Games. You mind if I change the channel? I'm like, hey, you're the bartender. Yeah, your, your call. And she's flipping through the guide, the uh, on-screen guide. And I just notice, now mind you, behind me is a bunch of, you know, mean-looking punk rockers, you know, and uh, patched bikers and all that, mean-looking. like My little phony folk. friendship is magic. Yeah, uh, <laughs> type of, uh, if you want to do that, you know, me, you know, people that are real big and look like they could kick your ass in any, you know, scenario. And I just see very odd parents slowly go up the screen and pass the top part. And all of a sudden, I hear from behind me, very odd parents, very odd parents, very odd parents. And the barkeeper, and I look up, I turn around to see these mean looking punk rockers, bi you know, biker folks behind, and the the barkeeper is looking at like, oh, what I do? He's like, do we want to see fairy odd? You know, these mean looking folks wanting to see fairy odd parents. And slowly, fairy odd parents starts making its way back down the list. And she's like, you actually want to see fairy odd parents? Yeah, my nephew loves that show. So I really like getting into it. 
and she we were watching for Fairy Odd Parents just the show started. I'm like, really? And I'm like, like I didn't want to say she kind of looked and was like, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to be a dork. But thank God they said something, not me. Well, it cracks me so, up because like I, I know uh Kenny Balzac. Um, he yeah. is part of both the do what's as well as cosmic halitosis. I think he does guitar on the do what's and drums I know, uh, for cosmic uh, halitosis. Uh, I know Kenny through, I think one of the other bands he was part of or mm -hmm. is part of. He's got so, tons of projects. So, so, uh, I know him. So he, that that's one of those aspects. Like we know kind of, kind of the same people or same circles. But so, no, he comes up to me, gives me a big old hug, and is like, oh, this is Sasha, she's a local celebrity. And they're all like, oh, we know all about Sasha. I'm like, only the good things, right? We're like, we don't believe half of what we hear. And they're like, if you've got that kind of reputation, that means you're all right in our book. <laughs> but, oh, no, uh, you know that, uh, listen, uh, since I work most Saturdays, uh, if you're, you and the partner are in the area or, or nearby, you have, you know, want to venture down to where I'm at and just, you know, do some axes. There, draw some axes or hit up the rage room. You're more than willing to do so. So well, and say howdy. I'm going to have to, cause I invested in some axes recently and I was looking for like targets the other day. And yeah. Boy, they, you could, you could uh, targets are kind of, uh, I think the cheapest to sell was 90 bucks. Uh, for uh, uh, for my establishment, it's twenty five per person for fifty minutes. So, you're and I think you're allowed to bring your own hatchets. Okay. Uh, um, I know he he also told me if you because people have been asking, um, asking if they can bring their own throwing knives, and he said yes as long as they bring their own throwing knives. Mm -hmm. Just that they would have to pay the the lane fee, which is the twenty five dollars, and they get uh the fifth the standard fifty minutes, and they have to sign the waiver. Yeah, so, the, the s standard legalities, and they would have to go through this if they haven't crossed here before. You'd have to give them the safety speech. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So no, I like my blood. tossing them at tilt there in Hagerstown because we went to warehouse again, but um, Al wanted to go out to the mall afterwards, and uh, so did our mutual friend Robert, who's with us. Um, and they actually have like, granted, it's not real axes, but they have one of the axe throwing machines there yeah. at tilt now, and I think that's where I spent most of my credits in there. And dear God, I just kept nailing the dang thing with bullseyes and wound up with like 5,000 tickets by the time I was done. <laughs> and it was hilarious because there'd be these big old guys just like, well, she can do it. I can do it. And they're just missing, not getting sticks, not even getting near the bullseye. I'm cracking up laughing. And then little kids come up, try to do it. Me being me, little kid, cool. Let me show them how to throw. And they were doing pretty good. And that was fun. Um, but it gave me uh a giggle. Uh, I'm thankful that my boss has a sense of humor and all that, and he lets me be a little bit of a carny in mm -hmm. regards to certain things. And I'll approach the line, and you know, or I'll if the fun is like, hey, I'll tell folks like if I cross that line, let me know. Let me, give me a chance to apologize. Uh, and for the most part, they know I'm I'm just kidding along with the group. It's like we had one person like told her friend, "You toss like a girl." I'm like, did you just tell her you talk you, your your friend that she tossed like a girl? She went, yes. I'm like, you said it, not me. Um, stuff like that. And I told one person because the we had one gentleman come in when we first opened up. He was like, he kept he couldn't get it in the the <clears throat> axis to stick. Sounds like um, a common problem with most guys. And he was like. The ball spring. The board is the target is spring loaded. It's spring loaded. It's rubberized mahogany, and just like making these funny excuses of why he couldn't get the axes in in the target. So I'm like, I'm using those jokes, and it's like because people would come up to me and it's like, oh, why can't I get it, the axes to stick in the wall? Ah, it's rubberized mahogany. Oh, okay, <laughs> and it, and they'll still toss. I'm like, you actually believe that crap? I had one person who's like, what? Why can't I get him a stick? And I said, well, the springs have been tightened this morning. And uh, that's why you're having a tough time getting the stick. He's like, 
can your boss give you the key so you can loosen them up? Ah, sorry, man. Uh, he doesn't trust me. He trusts me with a lot of stuff, but he doesn't trust me with that key because he keeps a lot of valuable stuff next door. He's like, oh, I can understand that. I'm like, wait a minute. You actually believe my bullshit? <laughs> How do you, why are you believing my bullshit? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, so, by the time I was done, I was able to get like a couple charging cables because they have them up at tilt for whatever reason as part of like the prizes that you can pick out. I was like, oh, charging cables. That's cool. Ox cables. Like, can always use those. Then you look at the PlayStation 5 digital only version that they have, and it's like 220,000 tickets. And I'm sitting here doing the math in my head. If I'm averaging 5,000 tickets on less than $10, how long until I. <laughs> you're doing math and you're like pulling out, like. Mm. I'm like, wait, it's a digital only. I'm good. <laughs> it's like, it's only a digital, but still, it's a PS5. Yeah, that's why I I have a digital uh, Series S. It's like because I, my you saw that at least outside of my place mm-hmm. and how small it is. It's like where am I going to keep a crap ton of games? I'm going to be buying them digitally anyway, so I might as well just go with an S. You know. And, well, the Slim just launched for the uh, PlayStation Five. I don't know if you saw that or not. Um, it's, not yet. It's like I want to say forty percent smaller, but not like it was hard to do to make that thing smaller because it's huge. Um, I saw my PS4, so it's not like I'm losing. It's, out it's on about the, DVD the same player. size as the G1 PS4, and it has. You can buy two different versions. One comes with the disc drive expansion, or you can get one without and then buy the disc drive expansion later. But you know how Sony's doing it. They're like, hey, you buy these combined, you're getting it cheaper. If you want to buy the digital, you can get the modular disk drive later, but you're going to pay a premium to get that. Uh, for now, I'm cool with my uh, PS4. and Same. The only thing, you know, but um, you, you yourself might see, because you're more of a PS4, PlayStation person than a Xbox person. I used to be uh, big into Nintendo, but being a horror nerd, um, it, how can I put best, Nintendo really doesn't get the horror games, and it it blew my mind, because, like, I was looking at Switch games with Al the other day, because my boyfriend and I were out, and he was looking at Skyrim, and they have Skyrim out on the Switch, I'm like, wait, 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 do they have Fallout 4 on the Switch? Because you and I both know how I love Fallout right. 4. And uh, they don't have that. And I'm like, why? You have Skyrim. Why not Fallout 4? And then, like, half the Resident Evil games on Switch are... you got to have constant internet connection to play them. And it's like, why do I want that? You know, I can yeah. get a disc and, and play that. But the thing is, for me, uh, like I said, you'll see start seeing me probably more on the PlayStation side of things, uh, roughly, uh, depending on when it's released sometime Mm -hmm. in maybe mid May, if not early June, uh, because the, uh, bit final fantasy bit collection is coming out. Uh, this is why though I, I come off a lot as a three, six, uh, Xbox fanboy. Mm-hmm. But because most of my games are on my Xbox anyway, and that's why I'm on the Xbox because most of my friends and most of my games are on my Xbox. Well, so I'd rather get. Here's I something get... I wanted to point out to you because I'm, I'm oddly curious and I've been considering doing it. Um, but you know how Dead Space recently got a remake. The what? Dead, Dead Space. Yeah. Um, I want to tell you that. You can get the Dead Space remake digital. Yeah, it'll ha- it'll have the digital. It'll have the X slash S mm-hmm. on it. Uh, you won't probably get all the benefits of the what the S and X might offer. I mean, you won't get, probably get the full ten eighty p and mm-hmm. that whole app, that whole or sixty frames per second. You'll get. The equivalent or, or best that your system can do, but it'll still play. Right. It's kind of like um, 
because I, I looked into it when you mentioned it, and it's like I it's like I wasn't sure I had to look into it a little bit more. It's kind of like if you played uh the best example is uh if you played the Master Chief collection on your your system, this um Xbox One, I think yeah. you have the Xbox One S. Yeah, yeah, that's white one, the one S, not Series S. It would still play, but uh on if someone if you downloaded one of my custom maps, it would kind of flicker a little bit because mm -hmm. it's trying to render everything. So when you pull out and look at the whole map, it'll look like it's that yeah. part flickering. It's there, but it looks like it has lens flare. Um, but Because, see, this is what trips me out. I'm like, why digital only? Because, like, they have physical copies. But the physical copies are exclusive to the next-gen system. That um, more... Now here, that's here's the second thing about that. Uh, like I said I want to pick up the digital Final Fantasy digital collection for um, Final Fan for Sony because it's other than Nintendo and the PC side of things, it's only coming out on Sony. Right. Uh, and I I don't want to be able to play one through six, and if I want to, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten two all in one system. If I want to do that instead of just relying on my uh, Series S. But what I've been hearing in regards to things being more and more digital only, I looked into a video, this was maybe two weeks ago. It was either on TikTok or YouTube or something like that because the, they were noticing the fact that when they went to Walmart, there are fewer and fewer new games in the cases. Mm. And they believe that a lot of uh, games uh, or systems like uh, the Xbox or uh, PlayStation, whether it be four or five, they're pushing more and more the digital aspects. Or it's and depending on who you talk to in the gaming community, it's gunning along the lines of or their companies like Sony, Steam, and uh, Game Pass. They're all going to the Game Pass type route where everything is right. a digital library. So why why go for why go to why get a physical copy of a game or a something to kind of why get something, yeah, I'm going to use the back part. Why get something like, yeah, we want to have a digital, uh, physical copy, but the thing is, when you get a physical copy of a game, whether it be for your PS4, PS5, or Xbox, all it is is starting that install. That's all it is. You can't really play mm -hmm. uh, a full game, whatever it is. Let's say, in your case, you brought up Dead Space. Yeah, you you're not going to play if you're offline. It's going to tell you we need an in internet connection to download this game. You cannot, mm -hmm. in essence, play a game with what's the de the disc. So that explains and... why they're not selling a lot either. Because I mean, I hate to tell them, there's still people up towards Alaska that don't have like a decent internet account, you know, connection. And that's as a lot of. That's the argument a lot of folks in the gaming community, or I say the video gaming community, are are pointing to is that there are places, whether it be Alaska, Wyoming, if that's a real state, uh, <laughs> depending on who you talk to, it's like uh, they they don't really have uh, a good either uh, high speed internet access. There are some places in, in this country. That are still on fifty six k. They're few yeah. and far far between, but they're at 50, still at dial up connections. Uh, there is no high speed. There's no no point. So, and they could be in the middle of the not um, Nevada desert where there is a town, but there's no exactly cable. There's no uh, low fiber. There's no nothing like that. Well, the reason why I bring up Alaska is that they still have rental stores. Like a lot of them, I yeah. mean, granted, yes, in West Virginia, 
um, towards like the Berkeley Springs area in Hancock, you still have that big giant video store. It carries all formats, which makes sense because a lot of that area in Hancock, Maryland and Berkeley Springs, the best internet you can get is one of those like satellite internets, which sounds like a good idea, but it runs like satellite TV. And so when you have a rainstorm or there's a cloud coverage, it, it screws you up your internet. Um, so as a result, that's why rental stores still thrive in places like that. Um, and it's interesting because like, if you're a retro gamer, like I dabble a little, um, it's why you've seen such an influx in retro game prices like GameCube right now. It used to be back in the day, like um, let's say PS3 era, you could go in and get GameCube games for like five bucks for like a loose one or even a complete one. Now, depending on the game, you could pay anywhere from, I think, the most expensive, uh, the most cheapest one I saw recently when I was up in Wilkes Bar to uh, see the Badleys uh, perform. Um, we stopped at a little game shop there, and they had a loose copy of, I think it was just like a random sports title, but they still wanted like 60 bucks for it. And then they had Smash Brother Me uh, Melee loose. And they wanted three hundred bucks for that. And it's like, I know. Uh, whoa, what happened? Uh, but oh, you're talking about the price. I, I remember seeing the video, uh, like him, hate him, whatever. Uh, Angry Video Game Nerd did uh, one of his bits in regards to Earthbound, and it was like, well, I don't have it part of my collection. When he did, you know, for his video, say I went on eBay to see if I could buy it. It's like I'm not paying like three, six grand, yeah. like six. No, it wasn't three four hundred dollars. It was like six grand. That's if you get complete it. with the manual and yeah. the strategy. And he's like, I'm, I'm not paying that much for you know, especially for video. Yeah, I'm the video game nerd. I'm not paying that much, but he's like, but I'm able to play it with you know, the NES, SNES Classic, yeah. and so that's how he was able to do it. So. Yeah, and, and and that's a fair way to play it, honestly. Um, not saying you should download ROMs, you should download ROMs. But um, you know, you can load those up with all kinds of games. Um per Nintendo, oh. make sure you have an archive actual copy of the game, but I ain't telling nobody, you know, you sometimes you gotta pull that ski mask down and get what you need. But, uh let me just say this uh, for the sake of everything, if uh, if I blink out, it's not you, it's me, it's the computer, um, something's wrong with the aspects of charging. I could have it plugged in like it is now, and it won't see that it's plugged in. So if I pink out, it's not you, it's just well, probably my The good end. news is, if it does pink out, we can pick back up and yeah. just keep recording. But um, anyway, since we're on the topic of video games, um, you and I both saw Mario Um this past weekend or you i think you saw it in the middle of the week when it first yeah came out. yeah um, we saw it bright and early saturday morning much to al chagrin being mr late <laughs> despite being a boy scout i don't think he uh got the badge for punctuality um but anyway um next time i'm gonna tell him well the movie's not at 10 30 it was at 10 30 but i'm gonna be like it's at 8.30. That way he gets here right on time. <laughs> <laughs> I got to start think, seeing things as Alan time. But um, anyways, we saw it. Um, the only thing I'm really going to say, because I'm not a spoiler-heavy person, if you saw Super Mario Bros. 1993, um, this was definitely the movie that we deserved then but didn't get then, and it's definitely on par. I do have some quibbles with it, but otherwise it's a great new interpretation for the character. Yes, I, I'm i pulling up uh, my <laughs> my notes in regards to it. Uh, what? Where the heck did I put my notes? What the hell is it, man? Uh, that's G4, but um, yes. Uh, I didn't put it in the subject. That's why I loved it. Every aspect of it. There, there's so many uh to kind of quote um uh not how it should have how it should the cartoon series how it should should have ended. They do the um uh, they did something where I was like 
in regards to Superhero Cafe, and they had like Mario on it. They're like, and that American character's like, yeah, they're going to be making top 10 Easter egg lists for years to come in regards to this. And yeah, and they, I can see it. Uh, I even did notes in regards to everything. Uh, it they was included... nice to see a Discoon reference, which was for the Famicom disc system. Yeah. Um, because there's like a computer shop, and you can see it pretty well when Bowser lands in Brooklyn. Not spoiling anything, but when he gets to Brooklyn, he, one of the stores to the right, I guess it's a computer rare, uh, repair shop that's called Discoon and has the little mascot for Discoon. And that excited me because it was a random oddity that few people knew about. I, I loved all the Easter eggs in it, uh, from including the, in essence, the theme song from the 80s. Uh, late mid eighties, late early nineties, uh, live action with cat late Captain Lou Albano. Um, I think the guy who played Luigi might still be with us, but I could be wrong. Yeah, uh, I thought he passed away years ago, but I, I like you, know, I could be wrong. But there were so many ins and outs. Um, it was good to hear Charles, the the actual voice of Mario, be you know have a brief little cameo from my hear you. He did I like a cameo in the pizza shop. Yeah, they that's had, why he, he they had, had Jumpman, the actual right. game, but then they all which was Donkey Kong FYI. Um, but there was actually a representation of how they drew Jumpman, the more heavier set looking and right. the Italian guy with the red hat and the blue coveralls yeah. and whatnot. And you had that that was I think that was the person that you know, it's like, wait a minute, that that's Charles. That's you know, mm -hmm. the actual person that goes, woohoo, and that whole aspect. Um the my biggest gripe is that they got Seth Rogen to play to, to voice Donkey Kong. I think Seth is very overrated. He's he, he's kind of lost it over the years. You, you know, it's like no, they could have gotten Jack somebody Black else. Perfect. Jack I'll Black give. was. Uh, I'll give Jack Black credit for that. Oh, what's but, his name? Ar Arminian who played uh, Cranky Kong. Perfect spot on. Yeah. Um. But my whole thing was getting into the whole Donkey Kong country stuff. Like, couldn't you guys have waited for that? You know, there was way too many crossovers, like, from other Nintendo properties, which I'm like, yeah, get some representation so we can build to a Smash Brothers movie later, but keep them separated. Don't make them part of the central plot. I didn't think Donkey Kong was necessary for that. Unless we were going to do a straight up Mario Brothers movie that was just I guess Donkey if Kong. they it's one of those instances where if they didn't include Donkey Kong, people would have been pissed. Totally pissed because in a way, before he was Mario Brothers, he was part of Donkey Kong. Right, but it could have been like a cameo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like a hint that yes, we have included the character because, you know, there's that whole scene where Princess Peach, well, there's a huge galaxy out there. And then we could see some other alternate world later as a cameo and different, like, aspects. Um, now, here, here's the great thing. It's like, if they really want to go full tilt to it, oh, yes, there's a whole galaxy out there. Yeah. What a great way to bring in the whole galaxy and do a team up with Nintendo Go, I hope you under, see where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. Captain N. Yeah. Do a Captain N aspect. Uh, what? He's <laughs> just, you don't have to do an intro of him going into that whole realm. Just have him there. But the problem with Captain N is, and here's where this comes into play. Keep in mind that Captain N, the cartoon series, focused on a lot of third-party games that were not owned by Nintendo. They were officially licensed. Like, Mega Man in the cartoon showed up. That's Capcom. Um, there is a Mega Man movie coming. Um, there is um, Simon Belmont, one of his worst representations ever in animation, but he was in Captain N. But they could still bring Captain N in and still use the whole aspect of not really a like in uh, the Mario movie, he had he was playing Kid Icarus and all that, and they had all the posters on the wall for Mario of the other NES games. They could just have Captain N, Captain N just like, yeah, I've been on the you know we, these weird things that you know, like I had a friend 
that was, you know, Kid Icarus or something like that, whatever the character's name is. Like, uh, yeah, right. I friend like but that. My problem is, 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 because I want to say, because wasn't that a, a, a I, hate, I always love to say their name, a, a, a Deke, pro, you know, a Deke property and also owned by Valiant Comics. And Valiant is owned by so many different parties now. Like Valiant's back, but there's so many third parties that were involved with Valiant. And then you have um, the cartoon, like the studio Deke. A lot of its big things were picked up by Cookie Jar and a couple other third party um, companies. But the thing of it is, is, is like with Nintendo licensing involved, Capcom involved, it's going to be a whole rights issue. Wasn't the whole uh, Super Mario Super Show done by Dick? Yes, but keep but they got mind, the music from that. So, but keep in mind that that was it only focused on Nintendo properties. So right. they can do that because it was a song based on a Nintendo property that Deke had to license. Um, it's one of those weird things about licensing. You can get and license an IP, but anything you create for that IP isn't exactly yours. Um, it will revert back to the original license holders after a certain period of time. It's legally gray. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, it's complicated, I, and it's going to cause. Or so I watched um, a video in regards to some of the Easter eggs. I thought the the spy character and the dog character that was in it, like the the wrecking crew, like yeah, uh, um, and the dog that you see when they're trying to repair that high-end house mm -hmm. i thought um until i saw that video i thought it was a jab at um disney i didn't think it was an easter egg i just thought it was a jab at disney kind of like what uh dreamworks did with uh uh disney and Trek, because like oh they're trying to parody wreck it ralph because here's somebody that hates mario and it's wreck he's going by wreck you know wreck it crew or whatever it is so i yeah. thought it was that i wasn't really thinking that it was another nintendo reference yeah it's so, another mario game it was very different um if and you i, I just thought it, the dog the dog looked like the dog from up and like yeah they're making a parody that was my first thought they're making a parody of disney or they're making you know a a kind of a jab at disney in, in regards to it so i'm like ah they're doing they're taking a jab at them so and it was nice to see Sniffits and Shy Guys, but, like, there's some characters in the Nintendo roster that I, th I think have been neglected for years. Now, granted, I get Doki Doki Panic as its own separate thing from Super right. Mario 2, but it, where's the Wart love? Has Wart appeared in anything since Doki Doki Panic slash Super Mario Brothers 2? I, I don't think... Uh, out, I'll say this. Outside of Shy Guys... And maybe uh, Mauser. Mauser was mm -hmm. in the cartoon, um, if I remember correctly. But outside of, let's say, if you want to go with the stretch, Mauser and Shy Guys. Nothing past that. And maybe yeah. the, the, the tiered cactus appeared and I think was not just Doki Doki Panic, uh, Super Mario 2, I think they were also made an appearance in Mario 3. Yeah, and also Super Mario World. I haven't really played Super Mario... Uh, oh, yeah, World was the SNES. Yes. But uh, for the most part, other than a few characters, I don't think anything past that. We might be able to see... If the way things are looking now, I think they made close to, if not more than 300 million worldwide. So, good chance there's a sequel. And from what uh, Chris Pratt was saying, is that they were trying to uh, be very respectful of the franchise and everything else. So, there might be more different aspects. So, we might see War, we might see. Um, a more of the Doki Doki Panic or Super Mario Two aspects. Um, they had this was this wasn't like a uh, a John Wick Four where it's two and a two close to three hours long. This was only a ninety Hour minute movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it had two uh, two end credits, so they could only cram so much into it. 
Um, everybody from I, uh, from what I've been seeing, has been enjoying it, for the exception of a lot of critics, for whatever reason they were. Because it's a uh, kids movie. And... It's a ki kids movie. It's, uh, it's either it's it's for it, the kids and it's more so for the fans uh, of all ages. Our our time to now Mario's one thing that our generation and even the younger generation all relate to. Um, and some people right now are saying that Mar the Mario movie the way it's doing right now is going to be hurting Disney big time because more kids now are relating to Mario than they will something that disney puts out yep and you know that's just how it goes um i personally like i said i enjoyed it for what it was despite getting drugged down to see it at like 10 30 in the morning um but <laughs> it was a blast and like warehouse cinemas there in lightersburg pike in um hagerstown kind of like the offshoot of hagerstown off of morgan's avenue um but it it was a good film. I enjoyed it. I had a good, yeah. another good experience I, at Warehouse. Now they're fully upgraded, so I, I retract all of the negative set things I said when I went to uh, No Way Home. Um, but personally, my opinion is, is they should not have opened in that state. They should have waited until the complete conversion but, and remodel oh, was done. Overall, uh, one of the things I liked in the movie is that uh, the whole, they went with the trope. It's It's a comedic trope i'm happy that they went to it was like you have that one minion um that always asks a, a good question and you have the you know in this case you had that one i think it was a uh, cooper trooper it's like yeah uh what if they don't what if she says no and bowers is like freezes the guy or burns the guy down burns you him. know to bone burns him down and he's like yeah you're that's a very good question you know that's jack liked it good Jack like that's Black. always been a, a that type of trope has always been funny, especially when it's done well. Um, one of the earliest ones I can know is like, um, uh, it was a film that was, I think it was done in like the UK. It started, it was like an CGI similar to this, it was, um, uh, in the days of like Ant Boy or something like that. I forgot what it's called. Uh, uh, what's his name was uh, not Bon Jovi. Uh, uh, he was in Labyrinth. He played Jareth. Oh, David Bowie. David Bowie. He played the in essence the bad voice, the bad guy in that. And the the kid here is like, yeah. Uh, uh, can I have the last question? To ask you a question. And he's like, I'll allow it. And everybody's like looking at him like, yeah, he's an evil guy. He's like. Stroking his e, you know, kids like, uh, your highness, sir, you know, I know you got to be an evil, you're being polite. He's like, I'll allow it, <laughs> you know, just that trope of, yeah, I'm gonna hurt you, but you're being polite. I like how you do think, you know, that sort of trope. And it's like, it's nice to see it, especially when it's done written well and done well, and the joke is executed well. So, but no, it, it was good. I liked it. If you get a chance to see it, go see it. Um, it if you're scared of going to a cinema full of kids, um, don't be, because uh, there was a lot of adults there that weren't with kids. So by all means, check it out. Yeah. But uh, anyways, since you are from the wild, wonderful West Virginia... Um, we want to talk about Chris Chan for a second. Um, brief summary. Um, this person, I'm going to try to adhere to they, them pronouns. Um, they have uh, I'll, I'll try to yeah. uh, adhere to probably their pronouns the best I can. I mean, no disrespect to all parties present. So, right. and the, so, but uh, um, I'm, I'm familiar with a little bit of it and. From what most people don't know, it's what somebody calls a locale, somebody who has a big bit of history on the internet, and we're talking like early history um, from them as a child being on TV, winning like several thousand dollars of KB toys to get tons of Sega products to as an adult with their love quest. Um, trying to find a boyfriend-free girlfriend, then yes, say that three or four times fast. 
Um, but the trolls kind of latched onto that. Um, and this is somebody who basically is um, neurodivergent. Um, I believe uh, they have autism and suffer from Asperger's. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't, from what I've seen, um, some of the places, at least the, what I dived into a little bit. Now, again, as I was telling Sasha at the start, when she wanted to talk about this, I went down a little bit into the rabbit hole. I didn't want to go too deep. Just to toe in. Really, just to toe in. Um, one, one of the websites or ch YouTube channels I went into, um, they, it was like, a, I thought it was just going to be like a two or three part, you know, document. No, it, it turns out when I was doing the sum up with a, a more trusted YouTuber, uh, to find out that they referred to this channel and it was a 50 some odd part docu yes. you know it was like it's huge. And each one's like 40 minutes 20 to 40 25 yeah. to 40 minutes and long this person I'm like oh is my the god the most well recorded person on the internet at the moment so if the world were to end and aliens were to check us out this is somebody that has been annotated to death but and trolls let me just say this when I first saw the first part of that vi that series, uh, I only made it up to like uh, chapter or I should say video three, but I, I got this before even the person said, this person sounds, because they had Kurt lips, like this person I think might be autistic. Yes. And it... Yep, you're kind of crackling, bud. You're cutting in and out. Uh-oh, might have lost you. Well, until you can get that resolved, um, I'll go ahead and add um, in my 10 cents. Um, but basically, those who don't know the history, uh, this person um, basically was subject to trolls. These trolls would set them up on false dates, um, make fun of them without them being aware that they were made fun of and got them to do some pretty nasty and questionable things. Again, I'm not excusing their actions because of their mental health issues, but I'm not excusing the trolls actions either um, because neither is a good situation. Um, and it's just ugly in and of itself. Um, it depths into like taking advantage of the elderly, um, incest because this person did things with their mentally incompetent mother. Um, that's not cool. Um, and then of course, you know, everything that kind of led up to that and they were in jail for a period of time, but now they're out. Um, let me pop over to Chris and see if he's back. And if he is, I'll bring him back in. Give me a second here. But uh, anyway, while we're discussing it, uh, though that person did go to uh, jail and they've been in jail for the last couple months now, um, it's been almost a year or two, I want to say. And um, yeah, I'm going to cut it here and do a bathroom break myself. So we'll be back in just a second. Um, sorry to the OnlyFans audience, uh, anybody else, um, you guys will get to see the full thing edited once me and Chris play with it. Um, be right back. I'll let it run. Now. All right. So, okay. for those coming Sorry back, about that. Technical difficulty on my end. We got it fixed, at least somewhat. Hopefully, sound is good and everything else. Right. If so not, I once just, uh, Sasha sends me the audio, I can adjust things in post. Okay. But um, I went ahead and gave a brief summary. Um, basically what happened, they were in jail. I want to say they were in jail for about a year or two for, you know, doing what they did with their parent. And, um, and told, right. as I'm sure Sasha could agree, until uh, this particular person goes to trial, Everything is alleged. Right. So proven guilty. But right now they are out of jail. Um, I want to say they were in there for at least a year or two, if not longer. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, and a lot of that was influenced by trolls, but I'm not excusing 
Chris's actions. I'm not excusing the trolls' actions. I think both should be setting in some sort of penalty box until it goes before a court of law because, you know, the trolls are just as complicit for taking somebody who has a mental health issue and exacerbating it to the point that it's been. Um, and Chris is an excuse because clearly their own parent is getting to that point where I don't know if I want to use the word senality, but it's the first one that comes to mind where they're getting to the age based on some of the video content. Um, that yeah, they're not making rational decisions themselves. Right. And if, Chris should have never to, victimized them. As uh, Mudahar uh, mentioned, uh, for those who are not familiar with the name, he's the person behind the, the YouTube channel, Some Ordinary Gamers. It, he does a lot of, he goes into a lot of in depth stuff in regards to controversies or scams that might be on <laughs> through YouTube. The thing and I he, think that helps the best. He said a shorter version. He, um, that gamer from Mars actually does a shorter summary. Right. It's like three episodes. Right, but he, he said uh, regards to I know that I've seen some stuff, not videos, but titles on Facebook that he escaped. Uh, sorry, misgendered. Sorry, uh, she escaped. Uh, but Muda said that this particular person was bailed out because evidence said that this person was bailed out. And he, like I said, Muda is, was very fair. He's respectful. He's like, I'm not judging, but even um, this person's parents might be, if not suffering from dementia mm -hmm. uh, or That's something word similar to for. it. Um, but since he, I think even he put up a disclaimer or said a disclaimer that he's not exactly sure if it, that's what this person's suffering from, but it, depending on what, either way, whether it, this person, um, this person's parent is suffering from dementia or not, it still may be considered elder abuse. And the reason why I'm going with like they, them, just to kind of clarify to the audience, I know that they came out trans later on. But I think a lot of that was exacerbated by the trolls as like, well, hey, you know, a lot of people like feminine people now. So maybe you'd have better luck picking up women that way. And quite the opposite effect had happened with Chris. Um, but until they are at a state where they're more mentally healthy and come forward with how they choose to identify um, with a despite being autistic, of course, but with a clearer perspective, hopefully medicated. And if they ever do get internet access again, if they come forward, they, they will clear that up because um, it's never been 100% clear one way or the other. Um, so that's why I'm sticking with they, them. Chris is going off the last pronouns, plus sometimes they, them, or that person. Um, and it's just out of respect until that person of a clear mind can say, this is who I am. That's how I prefer yeah. to address it. And there's uh, a lot of stuff I, here that's a mess. But the big topic is, is they're out of jail. They have been out of jail for about two weeks. Um, but I think the condition of this bail, at least as well as I can delve into politics of you know, West Virginia, and based on the scenario that had happened, um, even then, it doesn't carry a very long term. It can be as long as a year to, or as short as a year to as long as 10 years. Um, but based around the circumstantial situation and the person's mental health and the parent's mental health, um, I honestly think that they're not really bailed out and free to roam West Virginia doing whatever horrible crap. Right. I yeah. think why it's so quiet is that they're in a half halfway home or they're with somebody who's basically like, hey, here are the conditions of this bail and this release. You can't have internet access. You need to go through this and this and this and this. And if you don't, you're going to wind up back in jail. And I think that's, I, um, that's what I true. understand. I said, uh, Sasha knows that I am, for the most part, when it comes to someone in uh, this particular, I won't say mindset, uh, but as stated prior to me having technical issues real quick, um, 
Uh, I told Sasha that I knew, picked up right away that this person was autistic. Uh, but unless, if I see a person that is similar to, or similar, I would say, of sound mind, if you will. Yes. Um, and I get it from that particular person, meaning uh, if I saw someone it, like Sasha at a bar, uh, I might say, you know, uh, at, I might accidentally misgender. It's like, if I'm misgendering, please excuse me. Uh, if you come off, I me, mean, if the person's coming off as feminine, I might automatically jump to uh, she, her. Mm -hmm. uh, and I apologize. If that's not your preferred pronouns, I, I apologize. Um, until they tell me it's they, them, she, her, or, you know, what have you. Um, but I'm sure there's a few cases that uh, in the past where uh, I don't remember the particular YouTuber. Uh, so if I, please, again, Sasha, because you're the advocate, uh, please forgive me. They kind of bounced back, back between because they were female to male transgender. They went from she, her to he, him, back to she, her, back to he, you know, it, it was just like, uh, to the point, it seemed like if, depending on what part of that YouTuber's history, it, it kind they of might have just been gender fluid, which, uh, they would know they, they identified, they didn't identify as gender fluid. They identified as trans and it was right. kind of like, but that's part uh, of the umbrella. It was so it was confusing. So it's like, you know what, uh, until they solidify uh, exactly what side of the fence of they want to be on, I'm I'm going to go with she her. Um, but for the most part, if they're gender fluid, if they are uh, legitimately, uh, if they're pan uh, is the word I was looking for. If they're pansexual or they're gender fluid or they're legitimately trans and they say, I want to be referred to they, them, or, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, along those lines, I'll. That's why I maybe... always tell people when it comes down to it, ask. And in this situation, yeah. we can't really ask for an update because right. honestly, I think it's the, the court is obviously got to be smart and look at all the history that's out there and be like, look, a lot of this. And again, I'm not excusing either party. Right. But there's a good bit of it that's because of the trolls and the influence with the online community. But a lot of it has to do with Chris and their own mindset as well as, but it's no excuse. Yeah. Hard there's there's one video I said, uh, you know, some of the things I picked up on in regards to his history and what I've seen briefly, um, he has a lot more. It, uh, once he, he, sorry, they get treatment. Uh, in regards to uh, their situation and everything else, they're going to need a lot more than just right meds in regards to treatment because from what I've heard, and again, alleged, um, some of the f funds that he got in because some of the videos that he put out was kind of begging for money and yes. begging for donations to get food, um, money for food, that he didn't have the best um, budgetary aspects. And that's what uh, I think mean, where, a home uh, situation. Whereas you and I might say, hey, I got to have an extra $200. Um, like with me, I got had extra funds. And whether you, Sasha, uh, are, you know, a fan of David Kerr or not, uh, I don't know. But um, I funded two of his uh, – I backed his latest project twice because I, I'm, you know, hey, I like what he does. He's uh, an honest, what I know for a fact he's going to put out the stuff and everything else. And the cash that he has right now for this project, I want a few autographs from. Him. So I had the money. I'm going to back it twice. Right. It's kind of like my situation. Like I, I just recently did a ton of overtime. That's why again, like release on this type of stuff has been kind of shaky. So I apologize in advance. Um, but over time, health issues, et cetera. But since I've had a little bit of extra funds, um, one of my friends I had seen is trying to get down to Georgia, who lives up in my neck of the woods of Pennsylvania. And that's a bit of a trip. And this is somebody who has health issues 
can't drive. Um, so they're going to have to go down to Georgia to see their kids graduation. And so they have a little bit of a fund and they're not asking for a heck of a lot. You know, I dropped what I could, you know, it was like, Hey, right. 20 bucks, you know, and I know they're going to use it because I've talked to them about their child because they're, you know, gender fluid as well. Um, that falls underneath the trans, you know, umbrella. Cause like trans is inclusive with non-binary gender fluid, you know, AMAB and AFAB, AMAB assigned male at birth, but now identifies as a female, AFAB assigned female at birth, but identifies as male. Um, but um, their child is getting ready to graduate high school, big deal. They want to be down there and be a part of it. And I'm like, groovy, you know, that's a cause that I don't feel bad dropping money to. Right. Um, but like, I tell puts... you, but oh no, you and I both have the aspect of bills come first. Mm -hmm. bills food and you know once that's taken care of if you're uh broke you're broke it's a good broke and yeah i might complain about you know being broke and poor but it's you know it is what it is and i know uh next week uh there's going to be about 75 bucks of my, of my money that's going to go out to a new game i'll mm -hmm. have it, it, it but bills are coming first and I'm going to try said um, set 50 bucks aside or um, 60, a little more. But if I'm not going to have that much to spend at four state, uh, I'm not going to have that much to spend. I'm just going to go hang out with a bunch of folks that I know and, you know, have exactly. fun and meeting up with, you know, the con family because, you know, whether Sasha agrees with some of those folks or not, it's, no, no, it's still, family. It's gets me, it, you know, it, it gets me family. out of the house. Uh, gets me out of the house, gets me see, see a bunch of the folks that I haven't seen in a year. You know, um, one of the folks that I'm sure he's going to be there, George. Uh, you yeah, know. George was bugging <laughs> me to go, and I'm like, I'm saving up my money for Blobfest. I might go to the fall one after my Blobfest adventure. But, and he's like, but yeah, you could help me with the table. Or I'm like, I get it, but like right now, we're it's April next month, or this month now. Right. And I'm like, like uh, I can't just like, take a weekend off. I know, I know. George would say, you know, like, yo, if you're going, you know, it's like I, I'll, you can stay with me, and you know, I know that, but it's like, yeah, I, I, right now, it's too late to put in for it. Let me get my hours. Just and, let me get, you know. And maybe but this is the I'll new Sasha speaking, but I want to clarify here. I have no ill will towards anybody there. In fact, I see us as all family even people who may disagree with me or i might disagree with them family fights that's how family is yeah if you don't fight and and you're gonna have petty rivalries and those will go away and the real people are the ones who are there no matter what like there's certain people we could list off right now that will come to me and say hey you know i made a mistake and there's a few people i'd like to go up to go like hey i made a mistake let's clear the air and just be cool and get back to square one i would love to do that um but again, it's it, it's family, you know, and you're going to run into with that. And it's like recently one of the effects artists that both you and I know is like, well, there's a ton of people going to be there that I have issues with. And I'm like, go there and do the work. There's people there who want to see yeah. you regardless. Go there, do the job, do the work. You can be there for them as family, friends and fun for those people that are cool and screw the other guy. I said, because a hater is just a confused fan. You know, they, they're they going to run their mouth about you here, regardless of if you're there or not. I said, but trust me, they're going to run their mouth even more if you're not there. I said, so go I know, uh, do the work, be professional, but have fun with those that you know. And, uh, David Kerr said, uh, uh, I need somebody who might be able to do a, a, a bear trap. And it's like, does anybody know any uh, special effects artists? Like, he, yeah, same person. We're not mentioning names. But same person. It's like that's the first name I can like tag him in the post. Like, yeah, uh, see this person, you know. Uh, but that's the thing. Might work he's out. Got the cash. Yeah, just that, we have a friend that's helping. We'll do it. But if you know, I, I've got a medical bill or something like, that's going to come first. Yeah, it's like if it's a bill, um, I'm going to have you know, I'm going to have a ride up there. Because a uh, front, you know, my best buds girl wants to go up because she's a big fan of Ken Hunt. Mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, you know, I might not be able to do Saturday as much as I want to do Saturday. Uh, Sunday, I'm free and clear all damn day. 
I'll pay your way in. I'll pay for gas. Let me pay, you know, whatever you need help getting there. Let me do it. I'll, you know. And you know Ken, so I'll it's be, not hard. Right. It's not expensive. And I, you know, I'm, because I like to folks at Four State, you know, it's like, hey, you, I see you're a Dragon Ball Z fan. They have a Dragon Ball Z guest this year. Come on down. You know, here's the information. Right. You know, just like just someone stuff. like Chris, they'll they'll get funds for supposedly other things and use them for right. things they really shouldn't. And right. that comes down to my theory of them probably being a group home because I don't think, yes, West Virginia is backwards. No offense, Chris, of course. Um, no, it's part of my jokes and with what I do in regards to uh, my job. So <laughs> but, I use um, those jokes. But the thing of it is, is they have seen on stand, if you really dip into the poll and read into the court documents, that this person's not mentally well and shouldn't be out on their own. So I guarantee that they're in a group home that's monitoring their finances, as well as their internet access, hopefully lack thereof, because the trolls are just sitting there waiting, chomping with a bit to see what's going to happen next. And it kind of brings me into the other topic. There's a lot of locales out there where shit has gone bad. Um, I think the interesting one, I can't think of his name at the moment, um, but he was out of Germany. And, like, the trolls got a hold of some nasty stuff. The guy had his own house and his own property. He literally built a gate to keep the trolls out, but they would throw stuff, break his windows. He'd come out there and fight them and... Like, the dude could handle it and take it on his own, but it got to the point where the town wanted to be a small, tourist, quiet town, but because of the hubbub that this guy, I think he had something like the name, like the Red Dragon or something of that nature, um, but yeah, it got so ugly that they had to force him to move away, and his house got demolished, just so the trolls would stop coming and disturbing this peaceful German town. I'll, I'll send you a link about it later if you want to add it to anything that we do. Um, but yeah, it, it's like the trolls are taking this too far. It's it's one thing to goof like with Cyrax, you know, the guy taking it to Airbnb just to see if Cyrax right. could confront him. And then Cyrax did and got his ass handed to him. But the guy didn't go over there torturing him the guy just ran the airbnb across the street and cyrax is the one who walked up and you know the old saying that just step up to get smacked down and that's what happened or when yeah. they told him hey here's a cool way to jailbreak your xbox here's a usb thing you can plug into your xbox and it'll jailbreak it oh it broke it it didn't jailbreak it it just completely bricked the system and to me it's like that's a little bit more malicious, but again, nobody's getting hurt other than that person. And of course, right. have at least the common sense that you're not going to get a jail, a jail, you know, a, a, a jail bricked system where you can actually put anything and everything you want on it um, easily. And but the thing is, a, a lot of these uh, YouTubers, if they have, uh, even the ones you say are low cal. The ones that might have funds, or let's say hundred thousand, maybe two hundred thousand subscribers, uh, even the ones that might have a little bit less, at maybe at fifty, sixty, um, they could go out to a pawn shop, get a let's say a uh, new to them Xbox Series, whatever, or an X, an old school Xbox One, and we and claim it as a business expense because yeah. they just picked it up, and therefore they're not jailbreak trying to jailbreak jailbreak their xbox they're just doing one that they could toss away or really exactly. but there, there there comes a point where when the trolls get a little too malicious like again going back to the whole chris chan thing like literally having people meet him for dates and then have somebody swoop in and steal that date away just to make him look like an ass when you know this person has a mental health condition, already has right. issues as is, you're just exacerbating the problem. A joke's a joke, but there comes a point where I'm laughing with you versus I'm laughing at you. At you. Yes. Like me and Chris, we can joke around like the Xbox video we had up where I had to unpackage the Xbox that you got for me. And uh, that's funny because it's a laughing with scenario, not laughing at you know and with that i told you it's like listen this is something it's like don't take this personally because this is something i do with 
my, you know, my yeah. everybody. It's like I have friends I've done this to. You know, it's like, but it wasn't. Don't think it's like, anyone. It no. wasn't. It was. Like, I'm going to do malicious. it to you. It was fun. It's like I'm going to do it to you. It's like it, I'm. I think at that time, and I told you, it's like I'm doing this to you. It's not because you are who you are. Don't take it like, no, even though friends. you wouldn't. It's yeah, like I, I do this. You know, it's like I do this with my normal friends. You know, it's mm -hmm. like. I'm just being a troll to you because it's fun. It's interesting. It's just me being a pain in the ass. And it's and it's it's not being malicious. It's not purposely setting this person up where they could harm themselves or others. Right. Um, it's, you know, jokes and pranks and stuff are great, but there's got to be some payoff where you're not being laughed at, that everybody's laughing at the whole scenario in and of itself, even the quote unquote victim. But most of this low low cow stuff, it it's gone too far. Like the guy in Germany right. I just mentioned, where you're throwing stuff at his house. Now there are let's, some. Let's, low, let's low... use the, the whole aspect of the unpacking the three the uh, Xbox. It, you're laughing. You could be laughing at the scenario because it's a funny scenario. It's mm -hmm. yes, it's a it could be a prank, but it, it as you said, no one's getting hurt over it. It's just going to take about forty five minutes for you to you know untake exactly. it. But. Uh, for the most part, and no one's hurt, and at most something like that. If I did it to you know, whether it be you or another friend or somebody like that, somebody I know, you might walk away calling me a fucker, pardon the vulgarity, but you know, no one's hurt. You're, you're getting an Xbox out of this. Sh you know, shut up. You know, deal with it. Right. But deal with it. It's like. I'm just being a pain in the ass. But when you're dealing with somebody who already has challenges and it's not like one of those situations where it's clearly explained to the person that, hey, this is a joke, it ceases to be a prank and becomes something malicious. You know what I mean? And that's where I, I kind of have problems with everything that's gone on with Chris because it, it ceased to be, you know, a joke. Now, don't get me wrong. There's little cows out there who own it, like um, Cobra, JFS, or King Cobra. He's hilarious. Cyrax, to a degree, I think is finally catching on that there's a lot of people out here trolling me for shits and giggles. Um, and they go with it now, but there's some stuff that just seems malicious. Um, and like I, I know said, uh, that happened with Chris Chan is just now that, uh, ridiculous. We're talking about it. You're talking about low cows and OG folks that kind of roll with it. Uh, it just brought up the memory. There's a YouTuber. I don't know if they still are making videos, but I know uh, going on close to uh, maybe 15 years ago, back, like 2008-2009, one um, of my buddies was showing me a, it was uh, a pair of brothers, uh, an older brother and his younger brother. His younger brother, the younger brother was uh, had Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And they always did videos and it always seemed like uh, they kept getting comments of like, oh, you're picking on your brother because you got downs. You know, how dare you? It's like, he's my brother. Uh, the only person that's going to be picking on, I'll never do anything that's going to hurt him. He's having a good time because he's my brother. I'd rather be doing stuff with him in under a controlled scenario that if the only person that's going to be a part of this is me. If anybody came up and did this, what we do, they're getting get their ass kicked by me because I love my brother. I'm doing a lot of this for him. And and it was like you could tell it wasn't like nowadays with the apology uh, so called apology videos that oh uh, it that comes off completely fake. He's like, no, you could tell this is my brother. I love my brother. I will not do anything that complete if there's something that he did not want to do i would not pressure it it was completely honest and straightforward and you could tell there was a lot of love because i he's like i love my brother yeah i know he's got down syndrome right. i'm doing this for him for him and so if whatever money when this is again the early days of youtube where people you had to be actually not nowadays you need x now number of subscribers and you need x number of views and you don't even need that because get... like someone like chris chan didn't get the views until later on until the trolls became vicious um same thing with king cobra same thing with um cyrax um 
and there's a difference between a prank and something of that nature. Now, there, like, there's some things that you and I, because we have the mental capabilities to go, this seems too good to be troll, or this is full of crap, or we can identify the trolls pretty early on. Right. Um, like, somebody thought they could try to turn me into a low cow once, and I just shut it down and blocked them because I'm like, you know what? I'm not playing that game because I don't do that. I know what a block button is. I know who's, who's willfully being ignorant. And those who are actually trying to learn, you can tell the difference. And as a result, I've got no problems with ban hammers and blocks, you know. Um, and you're always going to have haters no matter what. Like, I love the philosophy, let the hater talk, because a hater is just a confused fan. But some of these trolls, especially if you start looking at other locales, and I implore you, check out the dude from Germany. Um, like, they got vicious. Dude lost his house, got forced to move out of his home because of the public disturbance because he was beating the crap of anybody who'd show up which is hilarious because again punks step up to get beat down but they were damaging his property they were making a huge scene and it was supposed to be like this quiet little german town but because of this one person even though they lived on the outskirts right. it was drawing the wrong kind of crowd and they got first at, forced out. Now, do I see something like that happening happening in the U.S.? Possibly, but probably not to the extreme extent. They probably hold some of these trolls accountable. But there's trolls worldwide now. Like, they have different yeah. laws and different rules. And outside of them doing something severe enough where they would have to get deported to us for conviction, I don't foresee that happening. But... To a degree, I see. Uh, if it's something overseas, let's take the whole aspect of uh, swatting. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the things that uh, I think I've warned you about in the past. It's just the aspect of it. A lot of states have this swatting um, laws that if you kind of uh, let loose somebody's information in regards to where they live and somebody else decides to, you know what, I'm going to swat this person using that information. And that person that gets swatted gets harmed. The person that let loose the information also gets tied into that as in some, depending on the state, I'm not a lawyer, don't play one on TV, but some of the reports I've heard that if, you let loose, uh, somebody lives at 123 West Street in any town, US, any state, USA. Somebody takes that information, swats that person. That person gets hurt. Right. And they go after that person and they say, oh, I got it from so that information from so and so. So and so also gets pulled into it because. And that's it's a, what it, makes it, it's. This whole situation a gray area especially with the whole right. thing because the trolls exacerbated it until it got to this point in fact there's one in specific that calls the incriminating incident to happen um where it's blatant it's what they were trying to build towards to make happen and it happened and it would be like um, like that situation with that girl that had that boyfriend that convinced him to kill himself, and she wound up in jail. Yeah. And to me, it's like, and, and the thing is, no different. In regards to uh, some of the um, alleged evidence, I'll word it like that, uh, because uh, phone calls were released. Yep. And again, to kind of fall to Mudahar in regards to this, he said the calls. Because you're talking about trolls. The calls could be faked in regards well, to thing. AI and deep fake. He said, he said, even I tried it, but I was only going with a limited sample. And it that's why it sounded rough. But with Chan, Chris Chan, there is a wider sample, therefore using this as a basis. So therefore there's a a minimal chance it can be faked. He said, I'm not saying it's faked, but there's a possibility. And there's much of a possibility of it being faked as it being real. But this until is, things are this is where it gone gets through, really, analyzed. 
with this case because one of the people who led to the inciting incident um, basically came forward online and admitted it was them. Everything was traceable back to them. And granted, that person's kind of disappeared from the internet because, you know, there, there are trolls, but then there are those who go after the trolls who go too far. And that's why that right. person disappeared from the internet. But I've not seen or heard anything about them getting criminal charges because, in my opinion, they're just as complicit as Chris. You know, just right. as. I, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, I'm going to be judge, jury, and executioner here, but I'm saying when it comes down to whatever penalties Chris is receiving, that person should get the same severity because you're not dealing with somebody of sound mind to begin with. Because like you and me, somebody tells us to go jump off the bridge, we're going to be like, no, but somebody like Chris might do it, you know, and that's where well, the difference. Somebody not just play. like with the men uh, mentality of him, but if you have one person crazy enough that is of sound mind, it's like, hey, this is going to be great content. Let me just jump off a cl cliff. But whereas someone like Chris Chan might just do it shown of sound mind but cr crazy like all right you want me to jump off a cliff guess what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring a parachute with me or i'm gonna bring a hang glider i'm jumping off you know right. i'm doing it say i'm gonna be crazy i'm gonna record it for content but i'm going to do it as safely as possible right but this or is, you know this is somebody who's not and they know it right and, and to me it's like i get it it's all for the lulls hence the phrase locale but there comes a point where it, there should be some sort of criminal action towards both parties. And I haven't heard too much from the other party. I'm curious how that plays out. But right now, it's like everybody's on the internet waiting with a bated breath. And personally, I hope we don't see Chris Chan again on the internet. I hope we don't hear anything more about it, aside from the useless speculation that's out there. I, I hope that this is the end once they get into, I'm guessing they're in a group home. That would be my theory where there's no internet access and they have conditions with this parole or bail that, Hey, you screw up, you're going back, you know, and there's not going to be any forgiveness and you're going to get kicked out of this house and wind up homeless and back in the system again. And hopefully it's, it's one of these cases where if we don't hear anything, that's the best, outcome in the scenario right that, that the person is getting help that they need and the thing is what uh i'm not going to go into it this is something that we could discuss either when i see you next but i'll just say it like this i won't say it on the show either way but when i was looking into the whole situ situation and so hearing we're... how the early days of of Chris Chan is when I realized like, wait a minute, this guy, this person might be autistic. And, but my first thought was like, I've seen all this before. Right. And it's like, I've seen all, not just the locale aspect, but I've seen this situation before with someone who is autistic, get, trying to gun for a relationship, getting into a relationship and getting things screwed up mentally. Mm -hmm. And I think you understand because I told you what happened when we last met outside. You were here in Dirty Bird mm -hmm. in regards to it. There's a lot. It was like a lot of similarities. Like I was like, shit, I've seen this before. I've seen this. What, what's this guy's name again? What does this guy look like now? X, Y, and Z. I had to kind of do a little bit of side digging. It's like, because there were so many similarities in the first two to three videos that I was looking at. I was like, shit, man. I've seen this before. I've seen it before. I've seen it before. I've heard it before. And I was like, this is not ending badly. That's when I saw uh, Muda, Muda's videos in regards to what's going on. His video uh, about the the him getting um, Chris Chan getting bailed out. Uh, his uh, video uh, a year earlier in regards to the controversy that just started and him getting arrested. I was like, dude, man, 
it, and, and this like, is the thing just, that I think is interesting because his past is so well recorded and you can see the change from when the trolls got involved and how progressively it got worse. And I'm surprised that nobody stepped in sooner. I mean, there was incidents where others had stepped in, but after their parent had passed, you know, after the father had passed and then their mother started to get on that, you know, decline toward dementia um, and they already had pre-existing problems because you could tell that, um, you know, Chris's mother was definitely a hoarder because that place was just packed. Um, it was never in a good state of affairs. Um, but the thing of it is, is, is that people were watching this and interacting with it. And I'm, I, I wasn't one that followed it from the beginning until it like hit my radar. Right. Um, the only way it hit my radar is I had a troll because I did run a deviant art account for a while and um, somebody had left a comment and I want to say it was like a, a year or two ago and referred to me and like Chris Chan and I'm just like I don't know who this person is but this sounds pretty far-fetched but me being me I went down the rabbit hole and I was like wow and I'm like why didn't anybody do anything about this sooner because we have seen internet activism in the positivity like there have yeah. been people who have helped solve cold case crimes. Um, like that person who tortured a cat, they were able to figure out who that person was and where they were located and got local law enforcement involved. But in this case, it's like this went on for years. We're talking about early days of the internet going up. I mean, this person is in their forties now, you know, Chris is in their forties. Right. Um, but the thing of it was, is, is that they were early adopters to the internet. Like we're talking like early 2000s, you can go back and find stuff on them, um, dating far, far, far into the depths of history. Like they were the first let's player uh, technically, cause they did a lot of, um, animal crossing content. Um, they were like the first brony, you know, um, an adult male at the time um person who was part of the my little pony found them um they were a lot of firsts for the internet and for somebody to have that much history and that much to be recorded online and nobody's stopping in to say yeah this person clearly has an issue and you guys are pushing them too far and that our social justice warriors and i say it in a positive way didn't step up and try to intervene blows my mind I mean, I guess to some degree when it comes to locales, people just, oh, well, that's just for comedy and they just click off and they're not paying attention. But in Reckham, you know, recompense, maybe we should start paying attention. And when we start to see this hateful vitriol, yeah. more people need to step in. That, that's the thing. It's like there's a lot of instances that are on YouTube even today. Um, there are folks that keep pushing issues. Um, I know there's one person that he does, uh, I think the term is called mukbanging. Mm -hmm. uh, or they uh, eat weird that, food and stuff, yeah. We, or a crap ton of food. Mm -hmm. And just that uh, he tends to do a lot of that. He gained way too much weight. Gained, and, and his audience just keeps pushing him and pushing him to do it yet he it's hurting his health and he just keeps on doing it and doing it and everybody's like you gotta stop you gotta stop but he keeps doing it doing it because uh his audience keeps pushing him to do it and it's just sad you know what's going to happen eventually he's going to get a heart attack and do you know health issues exactly it's like it's like no don't don't and it just trips me out because, like, we are a global community. We're more connected than we've ever been. And there were tons of eyes on this. And nobody once stopped to say, hey, what's going on? Like, recently, um, there was this guy who was online. He was part of one of those, like, like motorhead, like, websites. He was getting ready right. to sell some sort of, like, really expensive compressor. And then the story got out why the guy was selling the compressor because he needed money for a kidney transplant and everything else because his health was on the decline. And there was a bunch of trolls who saw this because they would use that forum 
to troll people. But when they saw this, they started to go fund me. They helped this guy out. They made sure he got everything that he needed. They, some of them even went to go get their blood check to see if they'd be a compatible donor to give to the guy. And it's like, okay, we, we do have good trolls out there given this. And we're talking like at least 20 years of history on the internet and nobody once said, okay, there's a problem here and something needs done. See, and that's, that's the, the thing. Oh, that's a sad, sad, sad thing about a lot of the internet. Sometimes you see it in regards to, yeah, uh, with a lot of the trolls. Yeah, the internet can be the aspect of, yeah, as much as we don't like this person, we got to help them out. Or but we, uh, you know, the for everything positive, there's going to be the complete opposite. Uh, 4chan is the, the best example. 4chan and Reddit are, I should say, the two best examples. Uh, 4chan is mostly trolls. Uh, they'll start sh They'll start shit. Just to see if they'll start shit um, in regards to everything. They have a, the biggest history for that. And just to see if the media will pick up on it. Right. Like, um, and when the media does do it, it's like, everybody's like, no, no. It's like, you do realize it started from 4chan. 4chan, for every cold case that they solve and try to pick up and people that they help, they'll do something like this to prove a point. That you fell for it because you didn't look into it. And like they started the whole Momo challenge a couple of years ago. And people were like, no, it's a real thing. It's no, no, it started with 4chan. Here's, you know, all the evidence that is 4chan. No, you do, you're not, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you, for you, who gave you the information that I'm quote unquote lying? Oh, uh, uh, insert. You know, ABC News, CNN, or Fox News, like, you or somebody's going by an agency that's, for the most part, feeding you bullshit, and you're regurgitating bullshit. That whole aspect. And it's like, uh, like what I saw this past election season, is like, I kept hearing in the voting lines, like, yeah, they're putting uh, kitty litter in schools and all that fun fun jazz i'm like you actually believe that bullshit mm -hmm. like you, yeah that, it's because people want to be dressed up and identify as, as cats i'm like uh, you did rise uh, tell tell me you listen to some idiot on fox news without telling me you what listen to somebody on fox news and you don't work a blue collar job and you'll never work a blue collar job in your damn life exactly and they like, why and you said one out of the thousands, hundreds of thousands of schools in this country, maybe five schools have somebody that that has somebody that identifies as a cat and wants a litter box. But in every school s scenario, right? Every warehouse, every factory, they have kitty litter in it for one reason and one reason only: spills. Yes. Oil spills. Helps clump things up. That's why it's there. No, it's not. It's because the cats. Then there's no talk to you. Shut the hell up. Whereas you and I could have that conversation and I could realize, hey, I work blue, I work blue collar jobs. I've spoken to me. It's like, what the hell you got kitty litter for? See that oil spill? Yeah. It's going to help suck up all that oil. Yep. Being being a sanitation engineer, I can tell you quite honestly, kitty litter is very useful. So is yeah. pine shavings. So we know. We know. Granted, since your ear or your fingers are closer to the pulse to the um, uh, rainbow community, if you will. <laughs> uh, and I say that uh, I, I mostly stick towards the the trans spectrum because there's there's a lot of weird stuff at the moment. Yeah. So, so but I'm, I've always um, been a rogue agent. <laughs> but uh, I say it with uh, lovingly and respect. And it's like your but your thumb is closer to that pulse than than mine is. So it's where I don't know. It's like uh, Sasha, do you know this? And you're like. And oh, educate I'll get 
where I can't yeah, learn about it together. Like, and so it, it's one of those things. Like, if I don't know, I'm going to ask. You know, it's like, um, and that's the most important thing in the world. Ask. A lot yeah. of people are afraid to ask questions. It, it, like, for example, the whole pronoun situation. I have a tendency anymore to introduce myself. Hey, I'm Sasha. Um, my pronouns are she and her. Uh, you know, who are you and what's yours? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a uh, uh, conversation. A great example for, for me for that is that when I did Otacon back in 2021, for the first time all three days, uh, I s- snagged a photo of somebody who, if I ever go back, I want to talk to somebody in a suit. Uh, I know George might hinted at it or you hinted that George might be part of the community or we used to be. Um, I'm not co- talking in regards to George. I can, but not until we we'll get him on to do that <laughs> um, in regards to the furry community. Um, but somebody in, you know, into it and all that. Um, the person I approached uh, was in full gear. And they had like a French made outfit, part of the, the suit. And I asked like, um, she, uh, pardon me, uh, ma'am. <laughs> I, I phrased it as a question. Like, um, she turned around and was like, I- I'll go with that. But she pointed, the person pointed to uh, a pin saying they, them. I'm like, oh, my, my bad. My apologies. I was just, I didn't see the pin. She said, that, no, that's okay. That's fine. So. It, it was not done out of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, say that you are, you know, he, him out of disrespect. Right. And I think we've had this conversation before long, long time ago. It's like, if I know you as Tommy for years and years, and then all of a sudden you're now Sarah. Yeah. There's going to be a case when it's going to be like, hey, Tommy. You want to go grab a drink it's not because i'm misgendering you it's just it's, that all those years the best way i can put it is that mistakes happen and as long right. as you're working toward correcting them instead of using it as an excuse for them to happen then right. it's it's a better process but when it comes to the whole christianity i've already given my theory i think that with this bail or parole they're sitting in a group home um, and they're with somebody who not only is aware of their mental health issues, but keeping them off the internet, which I think is the best possible outcome. Hopefully it's um, a good group home. What, what theory do you have, or are you leaning in the same way I am? Um, it's been quiet. I'm going, lean, I'm going to lean towards the same theory as you in regards to this, uh, because for the most part, I am going to wait until if, things come out or if some of the circles that I'm part of cover the whole Christian thing and they report on what the court cases say and given proper update and their trusted sources um, like some uh, Muda, maybe even Philip DeFranco a little bit uh, valid sources, not, you know, some troll uh that's out there it's like oh yeah i heard that he broke out you know or something like that uh or something like drama alert i'm not going to go that down that route I, i'd rather a reliable confirmed source not some sort of rumor mill in regards to everything if you can understand that and get some valid information as to what's going on i'm not going to make wrong assumptions Right. And, and, and that's the best way to be. And I honestly think in this case, it's like no news is best news. I'm just fearful that something's going to leak or something's going to get out. And of course, it's going to get ugly again. And I just hope that they don't have access to the Internet. I just hope that they don't pick up a cell phone. You know what I mean? Somewhere. Or yeah. cheap. If, if they do make a comeback, I hope they have somebody that is a partner in their life uh if and i don't mean a romantic partner Mm -hmm. i mean someone with more of a two plus two equals four type of you know i'm not saying uh christian is that stupid but someone uh that 
is more so, dude, don't don't do that. You're gonna fuck up. You know that that's a ro- road of fuckery. You you go down that road, you're gonna fuck around, and you're gonna find out. Don't I just, do that. I don't, just hope. You know, and my biggest hope from this is one that we never hear anything else about it. It just drops yes. off the earth. Um, and number two. I'm hoping if something does go wrong and they get kicked out of the group home, they don't wind up with a troll who's going to feed off of them or a white knight as what they call them. That's going to let them run willy nilly. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that the group home works out, but if there's a fail safe three right. to go with somebody, cause they've kind of screwed the pooch with their family. Yeah. So um, someone, <laughs> if they get somebody, if they, if the worst case ha- ha- scenario happens that they are out, they go back online, they have somebody of sound mind to kind of tell them no when no is needed and they, they act as a filter to tell Chris Chan, no, this person is fucking with you. Don't buy into it. Don't do it. Don't put the camera down. Ignore it. Don't go that route. Um, and it's one of those things I've. I'd rather filter it. Like there's times like I'll filter things through you, filter th- things through my buddies. Like uh, I don't think this is a good idea, but uh, I have an idea. Or if I encounter somebody that is. Like I said before, somebody that's part of the uh, LGBTQIA plus community is like, uh, Sasha, how should I deal with this? You know, I I run it through you through you, so I don't fuck up. Or if I'm going to fuck up, it's going to be as minimal as possible, you know. And if they have they have to have that type of person in their li- life that is going to be there to kind of mitigate everything, so it's not things don't happen again and again and again and again. So yours is the best case scenario. Mine is probably the better of the worst case scenario. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's, it's the best case. Sometimes no news is good news. And I'm, I'm hoping some of the trolls will get discouraged. I just hope nothing leaks because I know as soon as it leaks, they're going to try to figure out where that group home is, who, who that person may be that they're with. And it's just going to escalate from there. And I just hope that there are some decent white knights out there. If something like that were to happen, that's going to swoop in and definitely make sure that they're taken care of properly like you know like christian's taken care of properly and is on the medication is continues to be on the right path regardless of what a malicious troll might decide to do and if it's a and that it's a a, again i'm agreeing with you that it's a good group home that if something like that does happen they're able to put a stop to it as soon as they can as soon as they find out as soon as they they can, prior to it getting blown so far out of control that they're like, you know what, we gotta let Chris go. We gotta let him go. We're kicking either kicking him out or sending him back to jail because we can't handle it here. Right, and that, I, that, I'm just like, ugh, I kind of want the best case where we hear nothing and the trolls disappear. But you know, trolls, trolls. Yeah, so be nice to each other, everybody, please. And yes, you can prank people, but make sure that those people are in on the joke and are laughing with you and not you're not laughing at them. Um, that's the biggest takeaway. And also harm none. I mean, I hate to get wicked on you there and be like, do what thou wilt, but in the whole of the law and harm none. Um but yeah, so anyways, you have been listening to the podcast of Darkness, also known as Sasha After Dark, with me, Sasha the Princess of Darkness, and our Martinsburg madman, good old Chris Lums. Or anything you want to throw out there while I gotcha, or anything you want to plug or advertise? Uh, don't forget, uh, we don't forget we have new videos coming up on our YouTube channel, at least 
for the next couple of days. Uh, heck, uh, we have a package coming in from uh, Sasha herself uh, over the next couple of days. I might do an unboxing and post it up on YouTube and a reaction to it. And uh, I hope it fits with the stuff. beard. I, I want to see how well it, it works with the beard. I'm hoping that the because I have one and it's got like a cape behind it. I'm not trying to spoil anything. But I think but, it would cover it, but I'm curious because there's a little bit hanging out. That would be great. We may have to find a way to alter it to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Might just cut, cut it out like right here if I yeah, can. Yeah, just have like the like teeth that. hang over and then you just have hair. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll have to see. I'll, I'll put it up. Uh, I'll give Sasha the, the link tree link for everything in regards to audio content. I know I put up a... Um, an audio episode uh, that I've been holding on to for over a month. It's in regards to the uh, indie film premiere I went to at the end of February. The Z movie, uh, the zombie movie, or whatever. The, 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 the Zero movie that I was uh, part of, and I went to the premiere. Um, it's titled uh, From Hero to Zero. So uh, it, that's up there. It's something in between, and... Again, I thank Sasha for, you know, for what she's trying to do and, you know, for both of us trying to get back into the swing of things. And occasionally I put my own stuff up. I'll rent into the either. If not, I'll save something for next week's episode so she can push back on my idiotically stupid, chaotic thoughts. Yep. And as always, you can find him underneath, of course, Long Coat Mafia podcast. Um, and there'll be links and stuff on the YouTube video once that posts. Um, if you're not on OnlyFans, you don't get to see this right away. Um, but we'll have links for that as well if you're interested in supporting the channel and helping us maintain at least our Zoom bill monthly. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have unpleasant screams. And thanks for joining me as always, Chris.